gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a Johnny Microbiologist, a medical research scientist based in Nairobi, Kenya. The human species crave for food. Through food, we get the nutrients and these nutrients are able to give us energy. The energy is given in a chemical formula called ATP. In other words, we call it in science adenosine triphosphate molecules. That is what the cells need so that they can propagate. When old cells die, we need new cells, especially during wound healing. So we need new cells. The cells are the units of life. Without something like white blood cells, we will always be sick every now and then. Because white blood cells are the immunological cells that help to fight pathogenic or disease-causing microorganisms. And through food, these pathogenic or disease-causing microorganisms can inhabit different types of food and pose a health risk to humans, leading to diseases. In this video, we are going to focus on five types of bacteria that are associated with foodborne illnesses. Number one, we have Vibrio cholerae. Number two, we have Salmonella. Number three, we have Streptococcus. Number four, we have entopathogenic E. coli, that is Escherichia coli. And number five, we have Shigella. Going deep down, we'll start off with Streptococcus. We have so many types of these Streptococcus. They are fatally categorized according to their species. So we have group A, which is Streptococcus pyogens, and group B, which is Streptococcus fecalis. For group A, we have the Streptococcus pyogens. This inhabits shrimp, salads and eggs. Group D inhabits sausages and meat pies, among other foods. Well, the health risk of the group A type of streptococcus is that it can lead to tonsillitis. For streptococcus fecalis, it is actually enteric. It affects the alimentary canal of the humans. The health risk of this group D type of streptococcus is abdominal pain and diarrhea. The environment whereby humans live Sometimes we might see broken sewerage pipes. That kind of water that has actually mixed with the human sewerage and be a source of salmonella. When using this water to actually wash vegetables, wash fruits and prepare food, you are exposing yourself to salmonella. And this salmonella leads to salmonellosis. It is characterized by diarrhea, fever, vomiting and headache. Vibrio cholerae is a type of bacteria that leads to cholera. Cholera can be characterized by bloody stool, as well as vomiting and abdominal cramps. Humans can actually be exposed to cholera through seafoods, such as sea fish and crustacea. Also, the fishermen who are at the sea fishing can actually trigger cross-contamination from the sea to the humans, whereby they are supplying the fish to the market. Using sea water to prepare food, washing vegetables and fruits can also trigger the spread of the cholera infection. Sometimes cholera appear as an outbreak. Shigella is also a rare kind type of bacteria that is associated with foodborne illnesses. We have two types of Shigella according to their species. We have Shigella dysentriae and Shigella flexineri. It is characterized by stool that may have pus, mucus or blood. Foods that are inhabited by this Shigella are mainly beans and vegetables. Flies are vectors as we know, with their legs which are very spongy, they carry loads of Shigella in terms of inoculum and they help to spread this bacteria propagating the spread of Shigellosis which is caused by the Shigella. We have entopathogenic E. coli, Escherichia coli. It mainly affects a wide variety of food but it has been commonly isolated in coffee and cheese especially for those who do food science and technology. They have mostly isolated E. coli from coffee and cheese, the soft cheese. It is characterized by vomiting, abdominal pains and diarrhea. Mainly, the spread of E. coli is propagated through poor sanitation, especially when preparing food in the kitchen. You should maintain high level of sanitation. 